Thank you, Mr. Chair and Minister. I, I, I don't know. I only have one question. I know it's been touched on today by both uh, Madame Boivin and uh, Mr. Scarpelagia, but I, I, I want to get a little, maybe drill down just a little bit more. The definition of peace officer in the section of the of the uh, legislation, it mentions other persons employed for the preservation and maintenance of the public peace. Do we know who would be sort of grabbed within that catch-all phrase and is it coming from a certain section of the criminal code? Do we? Well, peace officer, uh, if you have a look at section two of the criminal code, uh, in sets out um, a wide range of individuals who, uh, uh, as I say, I indicated, I mean, starting with the municipal government, uh, uh, to make sure we don't just have mayors, we have Reeves uh, as well that are con contained with that, that, the pilot of a plane, for instance, uh, individuals under, uh, you know, a dozen different federal statutes uh, come within the definition uh, of a peace officer. And uh, again, uh, I guess the question you'd have to ask yourself, is it absolutely necessary that they would have this particular power? What, what is it that they are doing that they would have to intercept the private communications of an individual? And I think you would, might come to the conclusion and say, I can't imagine uh, some of these individuals, how and where and why that would be necessary for them in their roles, uh, their respective roles. And so I thought, uh, and I believe, and I, I hope that it's your opinion as well, and your analysis of this bill, that it was appropriate that uh, we defined it a little more clearly as to exactly who it is that has this ability uh, in an emergency situation to prevent imminent harm, to intercept the private community, the otherwise private communications uh, of individuals. And so uh, that, I think, was very important. And again, uh, it was one of the things we, uh, again, we didn't have to do, but it seemed to me that it made sense. I mean, one of the things that you will notice about the say decision when you go through, that there is, uh, sometimes we call it obiture. I mean, there are, there are thoughts and discussions in, that, uh, that take place on a number of different areas, but they do give us sometimes, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, direction on where we might go so that, uh, you know, we not, we're not challenged at some future case on some of these issues. And so I think it's entirely appropriate to, to have a look at those suggestions and incorporate them into the bill, as I indicated to Madame Boivin, uh, that, you know, we, we've gone beyond, we've done what they wanted, but we've gone beyond that as well. And I think, again, and I hope it's your analysis looking at this bill at committee, that you will, uh, you will, you will agree as well, that we're better to define exactly which uh, unlawful acts we're talking about. We're better to define exactly who it is that uh, can and should do this. This. And the, yes, it is a good idea for provincial attorneys general, but it's good for the public safety minister uh, as well uh, to do that. You notice I didn't put justice minister in; I got public safety minister in. That uh, he uh, he can take on that responsibility, and and why not? I think it's a, a very good idea. Great. <laughs>